Hi, my name is Alyssa Benjamin, and I'm a physician assistant student from Duquesne University, and I'm uh, uh, here at Seclair on my one of my clinical rotations. Uh, today, I'm going to be interviewing Diane. Diane, thank you for being here with us today. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, can you kind of just start off with a history about your journey through depression? Sure, sure. Um, just briefly, I would have to say it started when my mother became depressed. When she was 39, I was 16. Um, so that was my first introduction personally to depression. Um, and then I surprisingly I went into nursing and began working in mental health, which I had very negative feelings about the mental health care system because of my experience with my mom and how things went with her. So it surprised me that I ended up working in mental health. Um, that was sort of a, a, a difficult decision for me anyway. When I was 39, interestingly enough, I became depressed, um, which totally just shook my world because knowing that my mom had depression, I worked very hard to quote unquote take care of myself. Um, I was, no, I'm a mom and a wife, um, and I was very careful to do things for myself. You know, take girl weekends, go for manicures, um, sort of not be a martyr mom kind of thing. So um, when it happened to me, and I, I grieved, I still grieve sometimes because of the depression. Um, I had, um, as soon as my symptoms started, I was in graduate school at the time trying to write a paper and I could not focus um, on what I was doing and I recognized the symptoms right away. Um, I had done depression research for children at Western Psych. Um, etc. So I knew depression more than I maybe cared to know about depression. So when it first happened, I knew the signs. I called a psychiatrist right away, got on medication. Um, the depression lasted four months. Each time I had an episode, it lasted about four months. Uh, I was never sure if I was responding to the medication or if it was just running its course. Um, this in the past year, last August, I, I got depressed, which was early for me. It usually happened in the fall. It was sort of a seasonal thing, but um, not exactly. Um, it lasted for nine months. Um, I was on, coming here to Seclair, I was on three different antidepressants, not responding at all. Um, and the physician's assistant um, at the time suggested that I consider um, electric shock therapy. Um, and my first reaction, I started crying because I knew that's how serious my depression was. Um, and I went for went to Western Psych and had uh, 21 treatments, which is a lot. They started with unilateral treatments, um, and then because I wasn't responding, they um, began bilateral treatments. Um, but I would encourage anyone who is not recovering from depression to consider ACT. You know, there's that whole stigma. Um, attached to mental illness A and B to shock therapy, um, sort of what we see in one flew over the cuckoo's nest sort of thing. Uh, it was really difficult for me to walk into Western Psych as a patient. I had worked there for eight or nine years in my early young days as a psychiatric nurse, so that was very strange to me. It was very hard for me, and uh, um, luckily my dad's a retired person with lots of energy, so he drove me most. I couldn't drive during the entire treatment. Um, because my husband works, um, so luckily my dad was able to help me, and um, I was just getting so discouraged. You know, I started treatments, I think, in late March, early April. Beginning of June, I still wasn't feeling better, and I was like, what next? Like, if the meds don't work, and the, I'm not responding to the ECT, what's next? You know, um, but it totally just, again, shocked me that I became depressed, because as I said, I worked very hard at... Um, trying to balance things, even though I'm sort of a, generally a high energy person, I try to plan time, just downtime, you know, to sit in the sun and read or listen to music or get together for coffee with friends, um, that sort of thing. So, and I know my life would have been different if I hadn't gotten depressed. Um, again, I was in graduate school. Um, I've worked in mental health, as I said before, most of my uh, nursing career. Um, at Western Psych, I was lucky enough to work at uh, Philadelphia Child Guidance Clinic, uh, obviously in Philadelphia, um, where, if you're aware, Salvador Mnuchin, who's a very famous family therapist, worked. And I had incredible training there as a family therapist. They trained the residents, the nurses, and the social workers the same way. Um, get, so I had incredible, res you know, just experiences. Um, I had visions of maybe doing private practice someday or teaching. I did teach um, part-time at 
community college for, for many years, hoping to maybe work at a university sort of thing. But because of the depression, um, it's, I can't follow through with a lot of things because once the depression comes, I'm basically in my house. I don't leave the house. I don't leave my room. I don't bathe for five days at a time. I don't call people on the phone. I don't go to the store. I don't go to the doctor. I don't prepare meals. I do nothing. Um, it's a nightmare, to be honest with you. Um, it's, it's just, it's awful. I don't know whether it's, it, again, it's like living in a nightmare. Um, and I've mentioned before, I do grieve for my well time, you know, and even now I'm sort of, um, and I shouldn't, you know, trying to be optimistic, but waiting for the shoe to drop because things are going really well right now. I'm enjoying some things, um, involved in some volunteer work right now, looking for a part-time job. Because I had taken, decided to take some time off. I decided I needed maybe about a year just to focus on being well. Um, but I, I just sort of hold my breath a lot of the time thinking, should I get involved in this activity or commit myself to something? Because I don't know if the depression's coming back. So um, that's been my journey. <laughs> you mentioned earlier you, um, you had a lot of experience and knowledge about it before. Mm -hmm. What kind of signs and symptoms did you start to notice okay. when it first came okay. on? Probably the first thing I noticed was extreme fatigue. Um, now, interestingly, I had had a shot, of, and I blame it on the Depomedrol. I had had a shot of Depomedrol a week before the depression started for I have rheumatoid arthritis that was um, giving me a lot of trouble. So uh, my primary care physician gave me a shot of Depomedrol. Um, and the next week, the symptoms started. Um, I started, as I said, with the fatigue, then the anhedonia, which is the loss of interest in everything, the poor concentration. Like I said, I'm trying to write a paper and I could not concentrate. Um, I had some anxiety um, with it. I lost my appetite. I lost like 20 pounds in a short period of time, um, not within the next week, of course, but um, my sleep, my sleep was horrible. Just I couldn't fall asleep or if I fell asleep, I woke up. So I had this, you know, the interrupted sleep. Um, pretty much all the, I don't know if I forgot any signs because I had pretty much all of them. Um, you know, the neurovegetative signs started first, those physical signs started first. Um, but probably the most interrupting symptoms are the anhedonia and the lack of being unable to concentrate or even make decisions. That's when I forgot. Um, having trouble making decisions. Um, I know we, this is a little nightmare, we went to Disney World three weeks after 9 11. We had plans, our children were small. The worst place you want to go when you're depressed is the happiest place on earth. <laughs> okay. um, I remember standing in line at a, at a food place and I couldn't even decide what I wanted to eat. So um, those are my symptoms. And can you talk a little bit about what different uh, medications you've tried in the past? Okay, if I can remember them all. I've been on Paxil, I think Prozac, Wellbutrin, Zimbalta, Abilify. Uh, we added lithium once to sort of augment the antidepressants. Mm, I'm trying to think if there's been anything else. There probably has been. I just don't remember. It's been 12 or 13 years. So I think most recently I was on Abilify, Zimbalta, I think, and um, Wellbutrin. And I wasn't responding. And have you ever noticed any side effects from any of those medications? Yes. Um, dry mouth is a big one. Um, sort of the GI symptoms, the constipation can be a problem. Um, but they're not, um, they were, the, the side effects were worth the um, possibility that they would help with the depression. Um, you know, like I said, I'm not sure, I, I guess I'll never know if I responded to the medication or like with those four months. Um, because then I would, I would, I was a good patient. I was a compliant patient. I would stay on the medication um, when I wasn't depressed. I didn't stop taking my medication. Um, so I would, I, you know, even with clients I've worked with, I always encourage people, you know, people will say to me, oh, I don't want to be on drugs. Now, in the meantime, many of them are on illegal drugs, but that's another whole other subject. Um, but um, I would never discourage anyone from using medication. I think that um, it's made a world of difference in general in the world of depression. And with your um, ECT therapy mm -hmm. that you tried, mm -hmm. um, did you notice any side effects from that? I know a lot of times it causes uh, memory loss. Mm -hmm. You know what? I was very lucky. Even the anesthesia, which they give you before the, the treatment, um, I once I woke up, 
um, the, the, for the first month or so, I would go home and nap in the afternoon. But after that, it wasn't an issue. Um, I had some minor memory loss, but that seems to have resolved. Like, I'd start to drive somewhere and think, okay, where's this road going to take me? <laughs> but other than that, um, really not. The, probably the most difficult thing was not being able to drive, to be honest with you. You know, being dependent. I'm a relatively independent person, and it's hard for me to be dependent on other people. And on the days that you would get um, go for that treatment, can you mm -hmm. kind of walk us through what a day would be like um, and what the whole process of getting it was? Like? Sure, sure. Um, I had to leave my house, house pretty early, but I was usually up anyway. Um, and go into Pittsburgh, go into Western Psych. Um, when you get there, you put on a hospital gown, those sorts of things. And then they um, take you into like a pre-treatment room where they put the IVs in. And now it's kind of interesting. You're sort of in a, an assembly line. Patients are waiting because it doesn't take long. The treatments don't take long. Um, then they will you into the treatment room, chat with you for 30 seconds or so, start the anesthesia, um, and then you fall asleep. And then you wake up in the recovery room and you get, get dressed and go home. Um, and have you tried any other alternatives other than medications? I know we have a lot of group therapy mm -hmm, sessions mm -hmm. here, um, and there's a whole variety of things sure. that you can try. I have been in therapy before. Um, I do some. Um, I try to do some meditation, probably not as much as I should. Um, but and I guess that's one of my other frustrating things with my particular depression. I don't have a trigger. You know, one of my lines is, "I wish I had a lousy husband or something that I could get rid of." I, I uh, my my kids are relatively well well behaved as also young adults can be no um um i don't have any major life issues so i wish i if i had something to work so that's been my experience although um i think that's unusual to just again just my clinical experience since i've seen this from both sides um probably what i should be in therapy for is the just the grief i experience with um and i've thought about that just how depression has and I'll use this or how it's ruined my life. I, you know, I mean, just trying just to survive and live with depression is very difficult. Um, earlier, you talked about how your depression. You noticed that it was kind of seasonal. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little mm -hmm. bit more about? Sure, that? sure. Um, the first time I got depressed again, it was after the shot of Depramedrol. So that happened in February, um, and the depression lasted three or four months, and it cleared. Um, the summer was fine, and then the depression was back in the fall. Um, for, again, for about four months. And after that, it was pretty much a pattern of the fall. You know, I didn't have very many great Christmases. Usually January, February, the depression, the symptoms would um, would relieve. And um, and then, like I said, I would be good. Um, the last couple years, it's been, a, uh, especially the last year, like I said, I'm not sure what the difference is. Maybe I'm getting older. I don't know why. And that was the longest episode of depression I'd ever had, the nine months. Okay. That was, um, and it was unusual that it started in August, early August. That was very unusual. So, great. I think I mostly covered all of my questions that I had okay. for you. Okay. Um, was there anything else about your experience that you would like anyone to know, or just about okay. depression for depression in general? Okay. Sure. Um, again, it's it's sort of weird for me. I probably would not be in the mental health field if I if I'd had depression or a mental illness earlier. Um, because sometimes I feel like I live it too much um, and actually I'm looking for a career change um, even though I'm getting older myself looking at maybe working with geriatric clients um, the elderly um, I, I know I talked to a young lady I worked at a high school for 10 years as an intervention specialist don't ask me what that is I used to just say I was a special intervener I don't know um, but I had a student uh, who was saying who is has some mental health issues and she's saying oh, I'm going to study psychology. I was just talking to her today before I came here and I suggested that she not do that because um, just you know professionally people that I have worked with who have mental health issues I think it's too much. I think you need a balance. So um, although on one hand I, I thought I knew depression before I got depressed I had no clue. Not a clue. Um, especially the, the, the concentration, the anhedonia, just the pain of depression. Um, so I certainly appreciate depression much better, um, but I would encourage people who have mental illness to not work in the field if they know, like young people, that's just my experience. So. 
All right. Well, thank you very much for being with us today. Sure. I think we've gained a lot of knowledge about the condition.